Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Today, we're embarking on a profound journey through the life of one of the Bible's most iconic figures, Moses, the Great Deliverer. We've meticulously crafted 25 of the most detailed and challenging questions to test your knowledge and deepen your understanding of Moses' incredible story. Are you ready to demonstrate your expertise on the events, miracles, and teachings surrounding Moses? Before we dive into the quiz, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support is invaluable in helping us spread the Word of God and inspire others on their spiritual journey. So, are you prepared to journey through the epic life of Moses and prove your biblical prowess? Let's get started. Question 1. Where was Moses born? A. Egypt B. Midian C. Canaan D. Babylon. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Egypt. His birth is significant because it occurred under the oppressive regime of Pharaoh, who had ordered the killing of all newborn Hebrew boys to suppress the population of the Israelites. This context sets the stage for Moses' remarkable life and mission as a deliverer of his people. Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 to 2. Question 2. Which tribe did Moses belong to? A. Levi. B. Judah. C. Reuben, D. Benjamin. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Levi. This tribe was one of the 12 tribes of Israel, descended from Levi, one of Jacob's sons. Moses' Levite heritage is significant because it connects him to religious leadership and underscores his role as both a prophet and a leader who would guide the Israelites out of Egypt and receive the law from God. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. Question 3. What did Moses' mother do to protect him from Pharaoh's decree? A. Hid him in a cave. B. Sent him to Canaan. C. Gave him to Pharaoh. D. Put him in a basket on the Nile River. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Put him in a basket on the Nile River. Moses' mother, Jochebed, protected him by hiding him for three months after his birth. When she could no longer hide him, she placed him in a basket made of bulrushes, coated it with tar and pitch, and set it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. Exodus chapter 2, verses 3 to 10. Question 4. Who found Moses in the basket in the Nile River? A. Pharaoh. B. Pharaoh's wife. C. Pharaoh's daughter. D. A Hebrew woman. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Pharaoh's daughter. Despite recognizing him as a Hebrew child, she decided to adopt him and raise him as her son. This act of kindness not only saved Moses' life, but also placed him in a position of privilege within the Egyptian royal household, allowing him to receive an education and upbringing that would later enable him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 2 verses 5 to 10. Question 5. 
Why did Moses flee Egypt at the age of 40? A. He was accused of theft. B. He killed an Egyptian. C. Pharaoh wanted him to be king. D. He refused to worship Egyptian gods. You get 10 seconds. That's B. He killed an Egyptian. He witnessed an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave and, in a fit of anger, killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. When Pharaoh learned of this incident, he sought to kill Moses, forcing Moses to flee for his life. Exodus chapter 2, verses 11 to 15. Remember to hit that subscribe button and join our community to stay updated on all the amazing content we have planned. Question 6. To which land did Moses flee after leaving Egypt? A. Syria B. Midian C. Canaan D. Babylon You get 10 seconds. That's B, Midian. In Midian, he found refuge and began a new life. It was here that he encountered Jethro, the priest of Midian, and his family. This period of Moses' life in Midian was marked by his transformation from a prince of Egypt to a humble role that prepared him for his eventual leadership of the Israelites. Exodus chapter 2, verses 15 to 22. Question 7. Who became Moses' father-in-law in Midian? A. Jethro B. Royal C. Laban D. Amram You get 10 seconds. That's A, Jethro. Jethro welcomed Moses into his family and later provided valuable counsel to him during the Exodus. Jethro's wisdom and support were significant in helping Moses manage the enormous task of leading and organizing the Israelites in the wilderness. Exodus chapter 2, verses 16 to 21, chapter 18, verses 1 to 27. Question 8. What was the name of Moses' wife? A. Leah B. Rachel C. Miriam D. Zipporah You get 10 seconds. That's D, Zipporah. Moses met Zipporah after he fled from Egypt and settled in Midian. They married and had two sons, Gershom and Eliezer. Zipporah's presence in Moses' life provided him with personal support during his time in Midian and later during the Exodus journey. Exodus chapter 2, verses 21 to 22. Question 9. What occupation did Moses take up in Midian? A. Trader B. Farmer C. Shepherd D. Carpenter You get 10 seconds. That's C. Shepherd this humble occupation was a significant shift from his former life as a prince of Egypt. Shepherding not only provided Moses with a means of livelihood, but also allowed him time for reflection and growth, 
preparing him for his future role as the leader and shepherd of the Israelites. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Question 10. How did God first appear to Moses in Midian? A. In a dream. B. In a burning bush. C. Through an angel. D. As a thunderstorm. You get 10 seconds. That's B, in a burning bush. While Moses was tending the flock on Mount Horeb, he saw a bush that was on fire but not consumed by the flames. As Moses approached to investigate, God called out to him from the bush, instructing him to remove his sandals because he was standing on holy ground. This extraordinary encounter marked the beginning of Moses' prophetic mission and his direct communication with God. Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Question 11. What mission did God give Moses at the burning bush? A. To build a temple. B. To become a king. C. To conquer Canaan. D. To lead the Israelites out of Egypt. You get 10 seconds. That's D, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. God instructed Moses to return to Egypt and confront Pharaoh, demanding the release of the Israelites from slavery. Moses was to bring the Israelites out of Egypt and lead them to the Promised Land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. Question 12. Who was appointed by God to help Moses speak to Pharaoh? A. Aaron B. Caleb C. Eliezer D. Joshua You get 10 seconds. That's A. Aaron Aaron played a crucial role as Moses' mouthpiece, communicating God's demands to Pharaoh and performing miracles alongside Moses. This partnership underscored the importance of cooperation and support in fulfilling God's missions. Exodus chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. Question 13. What was the first sign Moses performed before Pharaoh? A parting the Red Sea, B, turning water into wine, C, turning his staff into a snake, D, bringing darkness over Egypt. You get 10 seconds. That's C, turning his staff into a snake. At God's command, Aaron threw down Moses' staff, and it became a serpent. This sign was meant to demonstrate God's power and authority to Pharaoh and his court. Despite the Egyptian magicians replicating this miracle, Moses' serpent swallowed their staffs, showing the superiority of God's power. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 to 12. Question 14. How many plagues did God send upon Egypt? A. 8 B. 10 C. 12 D. 14 You get 10 seconds.
That's B, 10. Each plague targeted different aspects of Egyptian life and deities, demonstrating God's sovereignty and power over all creation. The 10 plagues included turning the Nile to blood, frogs, lice, flies, livestock pestilence, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn, Exodus chapters 7 to 12. Question 15. What was the final plague that convinced Pharaoh to release the Israelites? A. Frogs B. Locusts C. Darkness D. Death of the firstborn You get 10 seconds. That's D, death of the firstborn. This plague struck down all the firstborn sons in Egypt, from the Pharaoh's household to the lowest servant, and even the firstborn of the livestock. This devastating loss finally broke Pharaoh's resistance, and he summoned Moses and Aaron, urging them to take the Israelites and leave Egypt immediately. This event also led to the institution of the Passover, commemorating God's deliverance of the Israelites. Exodus chapter 12, verses 29 to 32. Question 16. What sea did Moses part to allow the Israelites to escape from the Egyptians? A. Red Sea. B. The Dead Sea. C. Sea of Galilee. D. Mediterranean Sea. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Red Sea. God instructed Moses to stretch out his staff over the sea and the waters parted, creating a dry path for the Israelites to cross. After they safely reached the other side, the waters returned, drowning the pursuing Egyptian forces. This miraculous event demonstrated God's power and protection over his people. Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 to 31. Question 17. What did Moses receive from God on Mount Sinai? A. The Tabernacle. B. The Book of Psalms. C. The Ark of the Covenant. D. The Ten Commandments. You get 10 seconds. That's D. The Ten Commandments. These commandments were inscribed on two stone tablets and served as the foundational moral and legal code for the Israelites. In addition to the Ten Commandments, Moses received detailed laws and instructions on worship, community living, and building the tabernacle. This covenant established the terms of the relationship between God and the Israelites. Exodus chapters 19 to 31. Question 18. What did the Israelites build while Moses was on Mount Sinai? A. A city. B. An altar. C. A golden calf. D. A temple. You get 10 seconds. That's C, a golden calf. During Moses' prolonged absence on the mountain, the Israelites grew impatient and demanded that Aaron make them a god to lead them. Aaron collected gold from the people and fashioned a golden calf, which they then worshipped, attributing their deliverance from Egypt to it. This act of idolatry was a significant breach of their covenant with God and led to severe consequences. Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 6. 
Question 19. How did Moses act when he saw the golden calf? A. Prayed quietly. B. Broke the tablets. C. Called for a fast. D. Bless the people. You get 10 seconds. That's B, broke the tablets. He threw down the stone tablets, shattering them at the foot of the mountain. He then destroyed the golden calf, ground it to powder, scattered it on water, and made the Israelites drink it. Moses' actions underscored the gravity of their sin and his zeal for maintaining the sanctity of God's commandments. Exodus chapter 32, verses 19 to 20. Question 20. What food did God provide for the Israelites in the desert? A. Quail and manna. B. Bread and wine. C. Figs and honey. D. Fish. You get 10 seconds. That's A, quail and manna. Manna was a miraculous bread-like substance that appeared on the ground each morning which the Israelites gathered and ate. God also provided quail in the evenings giving them meat to eat. These provisions sustained the Israelites during their 40 years of wandering in the desert and demonstrated God's continual care and provision for his people. Exodus chapter 16 verses 4 to 13. Stay with us until the end of the video to see how many Bible quiz questions you got right. Don't forget to note your score and share it with us in the comments section. Let's explore and learn more about the Bible with these fun and interesting questions. Question 21. Who led a rebellion against Moses' leadership? A. Aaron B. Joshua C. Korah D. Miriam. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Korah. This rebellion was met with severe consequences as God caused the earth to open up and swallow the rebels, and fire consumed the 250 men offering incense. This event highlighted the importance of respecting God's chosen leaders. Numbers, chapter 16, verses 1 to 35. Question 22. Where did Moses strike a rock to bring forth water? A. Horeb. B. Kadesh C. Jericho D. Mount Sinai You get 10 seconds. That's B. Kadesh When the Israelites needed water, God instructed Moses to speak to the rock. Instead, Moses struck the rock twice with his staff, and water gushed out for the people to drink. This act of disobedience, not following God's specific command, led to God telling Moses that he would not enter the Promised Land. Numbers chapter 20, verses 7 to 12. Question 23. Who succeeded Moses as the leader of the Israelites? A. Caleb B. Aaron C. Eliezer D. Joshua You get 10 seconds. That's D. 
Joshua. Joshua had been Moses' assistant and a faithful leader. He was chosen to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land and oversee the conquest of Canaan. Moses laid hands on Joshua, passing on his leadership responsibilities. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 9. Question 24. On which mountain did Moses view the Promised Land before he died? A. Mount Zion B. Mount Nebo C. Mount Sinai D. Mount Ararat You get 10 seconds. That's B. Mount Nebo. God took Moses to the top of Mount Nebo, located in Moab, and showed him the extent of the promised land that the Israelites would inherit. Although Moses was not allowed to enter the land due to his earlier disobedience, he was granted the opportunity to see it from a distance. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 1 to 4. Question 25. How old was Moses when he died? A. 100 B. 110 C. 120 D. 130 You get 10 seconds. That's C. 120 Moses' long life and enduring strength underscored his significant role in leading the Israelites out of Egypt and through the wilderness. He was buried by God in an unknown location in the land of Moab, and the Israelites mourned for him for 30 days. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 7 to 8. Fantastic! You've just completed an incredible journey through the life of Moses, challenging your knowledge of these pivotal biblical events. If you enjoyed this quiz, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Let's invite them to join us on this remarkable biblical adventure. Don't forget to click that subscribe button for more quizzes and in-depth biblical insights. We truly value your feedback, so share your score, any questions or suggestions for future quizzes in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. May you be blessed on your spiritual journey, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, keep exploring and growing in your faith.